Hi everybody, Cam Sweet here from the Garage Connection and Central Digger Supply coming to you with a video that I have wanted to make ever since I got this thing. All about these articulating front end loaders that are starting to pop up at some of the auctions. Uh, so I, we're going to go over kind of what this thing is, uh, how ridiculous it initially was, and then sort of what I've done to, to make it a little bit more reasonable. So stay tuned. Okay, so a little bit of backstory here. Um, as what usually happens, right, you're, you're late night, you're on Facebook Marketplace, and you see something that you say, oh, that's pretty interesting. That's kind of what happened here. Um, I was browsing through, and I had had my eye on these for a little while off and on, uh, thinking about picking one up. And I had two uh, mini skid steers, so I figured, hey, maybe this guy will trade. Well, sure enough, he said yes. And, uh, and so we set it up and he brought the thing down. And uh, what I ended up with is a 2024 uh, Fland FL45, right? So whatever that means, it doesn't mean much. Um, but I got this thing and, uh, you know, initially I thought, wow, I screwed up big time. Uh, it just, I don't know. I felt like the mini skid steer was going to be considerably more useful than this. Um, and it seemed a little bit janky and whatnot. And uh, fortunately, as time has gone on, I've discovered that this thing's actually pretty useful. So um, a little bit about these machines. So obviously they're coming over from China. There's no mystery there. Uh, weirdly enough, they carry the same label that a lot of the uh, Rota and uh, uh, EGN skid steers carry so maybe the, there's some uh continuity with that um the other thing with these things uh which is a little bit weird is that when they went and designed these things uh it must have been awe inspiring the the size of the pile of cocaine on the desk uh when they sat down and they said hey let's come up with this thing because it is it's different it's different um you know, for instance, the like the H12 and the QH12 mini excavators, those are like finely tuned Swiss watches compared to this thing. Uh, th this is very, very sort of in its infancy, and uh, it's a little bit, a little bit strange. But uh, yeah, so let's take a few minutes. We'll go around. We'll talk about uh, you know some of the construction here and uh, what it does, what it doesn't do, and then and then we'll fire it up and we'll do some driving around. Okay, so a little walk around here on the machine. Hello, Nugget. So this machine is uh, essentially, it's kind of a lot like the, the mini excavators. So we've got a twin cylinder Rota engine, uh, or excuse me, a, a Rado engine. I believe this happens to be one of the 739 CC ones. Yes, it is right in there, 739. Okay, so we got one of these in here. Now the... Uh, the machine itself, it is equipped with a battery cutoff, okay? So that would be, you know, battery cut in, battery cut out. There's an engine control panel over here, and we have a key. Now, this key is a little bit weird because this key controls the engine, and then there's a separate key up here on the uh, dashboard that controls all the rest of the electronics. So you have lights, you got got uh, flashers, I think you've got turn signals for some reason on this thing. Yeah, right here is the turn signals, all right? So, you know, this key does all that. Um, the unit itself is so hydraulically powered as far as the steering and, and everything else goes. And we're going to take a look at part of that right now. So, so the engine itself, if you can see down there, there and I'll try to get one of the, the pulleys off, but there's a double pulley coming off the engine, and it's got four belt notches in it. Two belts run down here and go to the clutch assembly, all right? And then the other two belts, let's see if we can sneak it in here. The other two belts go to the other side and run that hydraulic pump over there. So it's a little bit weird needing to give engine RPMs, but also try to keep this thing under control. You know, the canopy itself is pretty typical. It's a complete joke. Um, it shakes like hell and, uh, and whatnot. And then... We also have the uh, the steering assembly over here, so we've got an orbital valve. All right, you're going to move this, and the, th the machine is going to turn left to right. The column is actually pretty secure in there. And then you got this. Now, this is the transmission. Okay, so you've got two levers here. 
each of them go forward and backwards. And basically this one over here is first gear and reverse gear. And this over here is second gear and third gear. And unfortunately for this lever, it's going to be pretty lonely because you only need first and reverse. Okay, this thing has three forward speeds and you have absolutely no business being in, one, in two and three. It is ridiculous how fast this thing goes in two and three. You could take this to work with how fast this damn thing goes in third gear. All right, we got the exhaust coming out this side here through a nice uh, restrictive piece of square tubing welded onto the engine. All right, so, I mean, you can see it's a little bit janky, but admittedly, it is a hell of a lot of fun, and it's been very, very useful over here in the yard. All right, so on the underside of this thing, essentially, what we have is, you can see the double pulley up there on top. We've got it running the clutch assembly, and that comes over into this transfer case here. The transfer case is going to split the drive and send one out the front to the front diff and send one out the back to the rear diff. Then over here we have our hydraulic pump, okay, also belt driven off of that same, uh, off that same pump, I mean, off, excuse me, off the same pulley. And then up here you can see the brakes. This is the brake assembly. It's on like a little bell crank that runs across and is connected to the brake pedal. Uh, admittedly, the brakes are a little bit janky. And uh, the other thing that I've noticed, which is very annoying, the axles aren't locked. So they're open diffs. So you, there's a whole lot of one wheel, uh, one tire fire going on with this thing. Um, other than that, it's, it's pretty standard, you know, tractor quality. Uh, Pistons, etc. A lot of overspray, a lot of weird uh, stickers and stuff. You know, pretty much to be expected. Uh, and there's also not a whole lot of jam nuts going on. So a lot of the uh, like the steering cylinders and whatnot, they can actually just most of these can just yeah just be rotated. So you know, when you buy this thing, just keep that in mind. So one thing that's an absolute requirement when you buy this thing. What we're looking at here through these grates, this is the throttle assembly. So I'm going to step on the gas pedal, okay? This is the action that actually revs the engine. And rather annoyingly, you see the, the cables up top? Those go to the hand throttle. So around the back of this thing, this is actually a hand throttle that comes with the engine. And unfortunately, you can see here that you would increase the, the engine speed and then bring it back down again. Unfortunately, when you hook up that hand throttle to the machine to work in conjunction with the foot throttle, it idles at about 2000 RPM, which means that the slowest speed that this machine will go is like Mach 1. And, and that was a huge issue when I first got it. Really, that was the one thing that I said that this thing's almost unusable, is that it just went so damn fast. And disconnecting that hand throttle really made a big difference. Uh, you know, is it a little bit funny? Does it stall out sometimes? Yeah, it does, but you get used to that pretty quickly when you're trying to drive the thing. All right, so let's fire this thing up and let's see what, uh, what we can show you about kind of the lifting, the lifting of it and everything else. All right, so we're gonna get it fired up. We're gonna lift it up all the way. We'll show you how high it lifts. Maybe. Bone dry. All right, so we got it fired up. We're going to go ahead and lift the bucket, show you how high it lifts. and proceed to stall it at the same time. All right, so I mean, I'm, you know, 5'10", so that, that's six feet all day long. Uh, the other thing what's nice about this is as you lift it, as you come up and down, the bucket maintains its uh, position relative to
the ground. All right, so if I were to lower this, you'll see that she, she, she remains level, which is extremely convenient uh, when you're trying to use the machine to do any sort of work. It's not constantly, you know, dipping on you and coming back up like some of the mini skid steers are. Um, so turning radius on this thing, turning radius admittedly is not the greatest. Uh, I'll try to do some, some loops through the yard and you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. As you can see, it's kind of got the turning radius of my uh, crew cab long bed truck that I used to have. Um, as far as the you know operating station, I mean, it's pretty reasonable. There's a uh, single control lever here, standard type controls where, where you know, you're lowering, you're raising, all that stuff. Uh, admittedly, it is a little awkward trying to get to the, the start switch for this thing. So the operation itself is pretty straightforward. So you've got a clutch, you're going to go ahead and throw it into gear and then uh, ease off the clutch there and, and off we go. So we're going to come up to our rock pile here. We'll try to grab some rock for you. You know, this is just loose, this is just loose uh, rock that I have in the side yard. Admittedly, the thing loves to stall out on you. So I mean, you know, is it is it easy enough to get the whole the hang of? Yes, it is. It's it, the, the learning curve is really not that steep on this thing. So what we're going to do now, we're going to take it into the front yard where I can really kind of row through the gears, and I'll show you what I'm talking about when I say that you really have no business in second or third gear. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so first gear, right? Just coming off idle. So first gear is, is wonderful because you have a reasonable amount of power and the machine doesn't seem really tippy. Like this is a, a drainage ditch that we're in. I promise you it's steeper than it looks. But we're, you're able to climb out of it pretty easily. So first gear, I mean, we're, we're going a reasonable speed. Now let's go into second. All right, second gear. Now we're, we're just idling right now. This is the speed it went before and first. And if you give it the revs, I almost get killed by the Amazon man. So, I mean, it's not bad. Now, here's third. And third, you got to give it revs because you can't even idle into it. So yeah, you have absolutely no business in third gear. I mean, it, it is scary. It's scary how bad it is. One of the other questions that I had when I was kind of looking into these things is, is what will it lift? Um, as we know with, with these machines, their weight is really the limiting factor, not necessarily the hydraulics. The mini excavators is, is sort of the same story. So I was curious on really what could I expect out of that machine because it is considerably longer than one of these machines and the fuel tank is located in the back. So I said, hey, maybe it'll lift more. So I don't pretend to think that that machine will lift this mini skid steer, uh, especially this one being the bigger engine model. But if it could at least tip the mini skid steer, that would really give you an idea of just sort of how much weight that this thing can possibly lift. So we're going to go ahead and try that. Now, I haven't tried this. I don't know if it'll actually do it. I could just flip the damn thing over. I have no idea. So let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. And uh, maybe we'll both learn something here today. Wow. So a couple things we noticed off that. The first thing is, oh my God, are my tracks loose? Um, and that lifted that at idle. I didn't, I really didn't need to give it any throttle to lift it. So now it got me curious. Now I want to see if it will in any way lift that mini skid steer. Let's see. I got to let this down before I kill a chicken. Hey, watch out. I wish I had got one of these earlier. Okay, so this mini skid is the V-twin. It's got the better part of a full tank of gas. Um, admittedly, I, I don't actually have that much faith in the uh, machine to be able to do this. This is a pretty heavy machine. And also the bucket is pretty hilariously thin on this thing. So I'm going to try it, but I'm not going to go break in the machine uh, just, to, just to prove a stupid point. But at any rate, all right, let's give it a shot.
Yep, that's kind of what I figured. Well, that sort of uh, that sort of answers that, doesn't it? So, much like these machines, the weight is your limiting factor. Uh, conveniently, on this thing, there is a pretty big rear bumper that uh, is possibly begging for some half-inch plate to be stacked up inside of there. Um, All right, so let's take a couple seconds to talk about some drawbacks here uh, on this machine and, and stuff that I think could be improved, uh, really needs to be improved, and, uh, and just, you know, things that maybe I'm going to work on in the future. All right, so the first one is the engine cooling. So this plate right here uh, represents the outlet of the cooling from the engine. So the engine fan is on the front side, the back side of the machine there, and it's blowing the hot air across the cylinder heads, then across the exhaust, and then across your legs. So this thing is basically like the equivalent of sitting on a heat gun, and that gets old after a little while. Um, I'm sure if you were up north and it was 10 degrees out, you would really appreciate it. But down here in Florida, we do not appreciate it. The second thing is the attachment. So. The bucket is really thin. I would say that that is eighth inch at the most. All right, the wells are a little bit janky. Um, you can actually see this has got a little bit of a bend in it. And there's no quick attachment plate. So this is all just ears welded on here. Nothing's gusseted, you know, and, uh, and you can't really attach anything else. I think that's a crying shame. I think that there should absolutely be uh, some, some pallet forks. So that's something that, that I'm going to work on is uh, trying to get a quick attachment plate for this thing. Uh, the other thing is that some of this cross bracing is, is pretty minimal. You can see there's a whole lot of real estate sitting out there. I have a feeling a couple of real hard hits uh, for a side load or something, and, and those are going to bend. And uh, the only other thing that I think is, is really crappy is, is in the back here. I think there needs to be a, a, a cooling fan of some sort possibly a hydraulic oil cooler and then this thing you know this thing needs to be filled with weight I know I mentioned that um, you know that would really make a difference and I think I'm gonna go ahead and do the old uh, Lincoln locker on the diffs all right instead of having open diffs I think that uh, welding these diffs would make a big difference in terms of my pushing power instead of just doing burnouts uh, the only other thing that I considered briefly and you know, we'll get around let's get around the other side here so the brief consideration I had, th this is the drive pulley, okay? And obviously, right, one side of it does the uh, hydraulic pump, that'd be this side, and the other side does the actual drive mechanism. There we go. So, you know, this one running the pump, that's fine. This one running the drive, I think if that was a smaller diameter, you would uh, drastically slow down the ground speed of the machine and it would give you a lot more grunt when you're pushing stuff so I might chuck this up in the lathe and try to turn that down to a to about as small of a of a diameter as I can possibly get it all right ignore the uh, ex custom exhaust manifold also that's really nice you know but I mean overall it's not bad it's not bad everybody everybody talks crap about these things and you know what it let me tell you something it's the most fun you'll have with your pants on yeah, I mean, you know, this, this is kind of one of those things where there's not a lot enough of these out there that there's a bunch of info uh, on them. That's kind of the reason why I wanted to make this video because I didn't I didn't find anybody doing stupid stuff like this. I only found a couple of the 30 second let me drive it around the auction yard videos and uh, one guy that had an electric one. So, you know, if this is something that you're thinking about adding to your uh, your fleet or whatever. I definitely wouldn't use it as a rental machine, but if you have a yard and you're looking to, to do some stuff that you don't want a wheelbarrow, whatever, yeah, I have I have zero reservations about the trade that I made. I think I did I think I did pretty good. Um, I'm happy with this thing. I do not plan to get rid of this because I can see this coming in extremely handy, uh, especially if I ever get crazy and decide to move back up north. So. For now, that's going to do it. I'm Cam Sweet with the Garage Connection and Central Digger Supply, and please stay on those projects.